His speech may have slowed down somewhat, but Robert Mugabe seems more strident than ever when it comes to rallying his supporters. Last week, he told ZANU-PF members that winning this election was crucial for the country's future. And wage a real, real, forceful, vigorous, devastating fight. And this one should be a fight of our lives. Robert Mugabe entered politics in the 1960s as a member of the National Democratic Party, a movement banned by the minority white regime led by Ian Smith when Zimbabwe was known as Rhodesia. He played a pivotal role in the country's fight for independence and a constitutional democracy and signed the Lancaster House Accord, which ended 90 years of British rule. Mugabe started off as prime minister before becoming executive president after a change in the constitution in 1987. Celebrations were twofold as he ended a long-running feud with Zapu party leader Joshua Nkomo. The former freedom fighters' reconciliation led to the birth of the Zimbabwe African National Union Patriotic Front. His long reign of power has earned the admiration of many who view him as an enduring political tactician. But Mugabe's critics revile him as cunning and ruthless. They point to his seizure of white-owned commercial farms 13 years ago, and now his indigenization policy designed to take control of mines and banks. It is true that His Excellency, the indigenization and empowerment policy, for example, will broaden ownership and participation in the economy in a manner that recognizes the sovereign right of ownership of the indigenous people of Zimbabwe. Britain, the United States and other Western countries are among his favorite targets for imposing crippling sanctions over charges of vote rigging and rights abuses. But Mugabe shows no sign of easing his attacks on homosexuals. You do not have the freedom to marry other men or uh, marry other women. There is no such freedom. Rumors persist of his ill health and treatment for cancer, but Harare insists his frequent visits to Singapore are for an eye problem. 